statistical signal processing and um, in our last video we were discussing about the Bayesian theorem and Bayesian philosophy right and sorry unfortunately I had to leave urgently um, so we'll continue with what uh, from where we left and unfortunately I also lost the slide um, but no nothing to worry about I'll just do a quick recap for you and um, so what we discussed last time was um, we saw the event based equation of the Bayesian theorem right and we say um, we said that um, if I have two events A and B, okay, and then what is the probability uh, of the event occurring simultaneously? And from that we derive this Bayesian equation. And what it states that is, um, if what is the probability of the event A, given that event B has already occurred? And we saw that well, in order to derive this relation, what we need to do is we need to find what is the probability of A, and given that A has occurred, what is the probability of the B? and then divided by probability of p. But this was all pure analytic equation kind of thing, right? It did not make much sense about it. And so we looked into the um, a diachronic representation uh, based on the belief and the evidence. And we saw that, well, if I represent one of the event as my hypothesis or the belief, and if I represent the other um, event as my evidence, then in that case, what I can say is that the probability of my hypothesis given the evidence means what is the probability of my belief given that I have got certain evidence um, that it can be derived as the probability of the belief this is the belief that I already have which is going to be topped up or topped down by certain evidence okay which is either supporting or not supporting the belief so that is the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis divided by the probability of the evidence Right, so we left from there. Now we'll take some uh, examples and try to make sense out of it. Okay, um, so um, we can look into the um, one real life scenario. Um, let's say that um, let's take example one. Um, let's say that you are going for the interview, right? And um, you have certain pre belief that about a certain company that you are going to, and you have certain uh, basic um, understanding or certain beliefs, right? And let us call that belief is that well. Um, it could be it is a good company obviously because that's why you're going there for the interview so you have got certain belief and that belief that I call the distribution so the distribution of that belief I'm calling it as P of H okay that uh, fine this is the preconceived idea that you have so that is my belief okay this is the belief that I'm having now what happens is the next step right you go there you go and attend the interview and then you have certain discussions about um, the company and all the stuff and then you realize well okay you had certain belief now whether now you're seeing the evidence okay whether it is supporting the belief or against the belief so if I call this as the evidence so I call it as a probability of the evidence given that I am holding certain belief right so this is and this we had defined and okay um, in the previous video we also came up with the notion of the priori uh, posteriori and the likelihood right so um, this probability of H it is also called a prior right it is a prior so this is the prior belief that I am holding okay and I am attaching some distribution to that in a statistical sense and this is called the likelihood this is the likelihood okay this is called the likelihood and right so now I, I was having certain belief now given that I was having I was in the domain of that particular belief and then I went to the interview but then when I go to the interview either my belief is helped by the evidence or it is not helped by the evidence okay so these are the two uh, points of the Bayesian theorem that goes on the top of the it's the numerator right and then we have the probability of the evidence now this this is a bit tricky part the probability of the evidence so this evidence it is actually the total probability of the evidence which is in support and also not in support of the belief okay so let's say that you are holding some positive belief okay so this evidence is nothing else but the um, it is the summation or uh, it is the evidence that supports that supports your belief okay plus it is also the evidence that is against the belief it is also against your belief right so this point is very important and it is a bit tricky um, but in the numerical sense it basically acts as a normalizing factor okay and so if you put all these things there and plug the, plug them into this equation then what you will come up with is that you will come up with a refreshed new idea or refresh new belief based on the evidence so now what Bayes theorem tells us that okay I was holding certain belief in prior 
okay and but then it has got topped up with my certain evidence okay and now given that evidence and given the belief and given that i have the probability of the evidence now my new belief has got changed okay so this is the basical philosophical um, diachronic representation of so basically you can start off with certain belief then if that belief is supported by the evidence then you can increase uh, your belief can increase in a positive direction or it can be it could decrease in a negative direction okay so that is an update of the beliefs so the new update so this is what um, um, people call it as um, let me change the color here um, so people call this as an update okay this is called the update and this guy is my pre-belief this is my pre-belief uh, or the prior okay this is my prior so this is the update of the belief and it is also called a posteriori a posterior right so this is this is the posterior this is the prior this is my likelihood okay this is my likelihood and this is the normalizing factor that I'm going to have okay this is a normalizing factor oh, fine so this is um, a more on a philosophical sense now let's take um, one of the real-life examples that we normally see in communication systems or um, generally with any system which has got the inputs and outputs and let us try to relate the Bayesian philosophy with that okay so um, let's try to take the second example and check how it is going to work out um, because this is more of a practical implementation right so um, let's say that I have got certain system this is a black box which I do not know okay so this is my certain system and this system has got certain input and it has got a an output and I will denote input as X and I'll denote output as Y and let us say that X has got certain probability okay and Y also has got certain probability so it has so basically what I'm saying is that well this guy is also random okay this guy is also random and this guy is also random well although it is random it has got certain statistical properties associated with that um, uh, defined by its statistical parameters okay so if you assume that well my input is Gaussian in nature and what our output also is Gaussian in nature then um, we'll come to that um, but uh, um, if you know about the Gaussian distribution you can say that well okay this is random in nature but it is um, defined by two parameters mu and um, sigma mu and sigma that is the mean and the variance right and here also it is mean and the variance but we are not going into that at this moment um, because we are associating um, just with the pure Bayesian philosophy at the moment okay so now so this is the input this is the output okay and I'm attaching the probability distribution to both now how do I relate the Bayesian equation so this Bayesian equation with this system right so the Bayesian equation is going to look like this so um, okay let me just say this is my input okay and this is my output now I have the probability of y and this probability of y is not completely unique okay it can it is also dependent upon what I am transmitting because if I change the input then output is also going to change then in that case it is they are not independent right there are um, there is a dependent probability so in that case I can expect right the distribution of probability of y given x probability of y given x so now the idea is um, what um, what is going what the Bayesian theorem is going to tell you is that what is the probability of X given that you have Y you have received how you can find this distribution now this is a very tricky thing but in order to find this the Bayesian theorem is going to make it very simple for us and the, what the Bayesian theorem tells us is that the probability of X given that you have received the Y Y is basically the measurements that you have received from the output it is equivalent to the probability distribution of X okay and then the probability of Y given that you have already transmitted X divided by the probability of Y okay so this is what the um, system model um, for the Bayesian theorem approach and again um, if I want to relate with the posteriori and priori and the likelihood so this is basically um, this is the likelihood function for me right um, this is my prior this is what we call as a prior this is my normalizing factor this is my normalizing factor and this guy is my posterior 
okay now this is very important um, equation um, to remember and uh, when we do the um, algorithms development in for wireless signal processing in that case okay this in this algorithm and this equation is the most important equation that we need to remember okay um, so I would suggest that you write it down somewhere and remember it um, because we'll come across this in many algorithm developments in the near future okay so I hope you have enjoyed the couple of examples and uh, we'll carry on with the further discussion on uh, statistical signal processing and so I will see you in the next video